The Mendian Honey Falls Lima Sentinel welcomes you to this edition of the Mayor's and Supervisors Weekly Update, brought to you by... Each week, our community makes history. Each week, you make history. And each week, there's only one source to turn to for the first take on history. You know what that is? Subscribe to the Sentinel right now to discover the history being made in your own backyard. The Mendian Honey Falls Lima Sentinel. More than just your news, it's your history. Hey, welcome everyone to this week's edition of the Mayors and Supervisors Update. I'm Chris Carosa, publisher of the Men in Honey Eye Falls Lima Sentinel. And each week, we bring you the goings on from the towns and village in our coverage area. Let's start with Brent Rosiak, who is representing John Moffitt of the town of Menden. Brent, how are we doing in Menden? I'm doing good. I want to hello and thank you for having me back this week. Uh, you know, our uh, our highway guys have been out a little bit from this ice storm. Uh, actually, I talked with the highway superintendent today. Uh, they have been out since two o'clock on Wednesday uh, doing slice and ice and removal operations, and they're still out doing it as we are here today on Friday. Um, <coughs> the first thing I'd like to bring to attention is the Town of Menden Facebook page is our highway superintendent, Andy Cachetta, has posted, posted an update of activities of the highway department. Um, one item in particular in there is the highway department will be working with Monroe County to install pickleball, pickleball courts in the Menden Ponds Beach parking lot. Uh, they also have an item in there, which is the description of snow and ice removal operations and why the plow trucks drive the speed that they do. Um, I recommend that you follow the Town of Menden Facebook page uh, for future updates from the Highway Department and other town activities. Uh, another item I'd like to discuss is the Menden Community Business Association. Uh, the memberships of this association is businesses within the hamlet of Menden, and they do events around the hamlet of Menden throughout the year. Uh, some of the events coming up in 2023 is spring beautification of it. They do that on May 20th. Another item is the Menden Music Festival, which they hold down at Menden 64. Uh, it's a pretty good time. They, they usually pick two dates in the summer that goes on down there, and they have the of varying bands that play at Menden 64. They have food and tents at Menden 64, and they also have food at other businesses around the hamlet. Um, another event that they have going on is the Black Diamond Marathon on August 28th, and Holidays in the Hamlet, which is Wednesday after Thanksgiving. Um, and they do food and vendors at uh, last year at Westminster took place, Menden 64, the Cottage Hotel, and the Menden Commons, which includes Flowers by Fountains. It's kind of a Hamlet, a wide event. Uh, in addition, they also have an ugly sweater race, 5K, that's going to take place on December 2nd. But uh, the Menden Community Business Association has a Facebook page. I recommend that you follow that also for these updates. Uh, as of right now, they do not have any dates for the Menden Music Festival. Uh, they will, those will be posted when they have selected them. Um, that's what I have for this week. I appreciate the opportunity and thank you for having me. All right. Thanks, Brent. Mike, over to you in the town of Lima. What is lovely in Lima? Well, Chris, uh, good to see everybody again, as always. Uh, some good news. The uh, Livingston County Center for Nursing and Rehabilitation, uh, it was announced, uh, has just received a $653,000 capital grant from New York State. Uh, the money is to be used to upgrade wireless technology, firewall, uh, security, nurse call system uh, to improve uh, residents' uh, safety and satisfaction and staff communications. Uh, so uh, we're very grateful that, uh, that they're going to be getting that and helping to smooth out the operations there. Uh, ice storm-wise, uh, some branches, some ice, some snow, uh, but nothing that uh, our highway crew couldn't handle. Uh, it looks like cleanup is going to be ongoing for a couple of days, just small branches here and there. Uh, of course, the initial hit was is we did not get anything so large in the road that it could not be simply nudged off with a plow. Um, so over time, we'll go ahead and get that all cleaned out. 
Uh, the sticky, hard to open door on the north side of the town hall, which is where you enter from the parking lot, has been fixed. Uh, it was because water was streaming down the side of the building due to a hole in the roof. Uh, so thank you to Steve Moore and his crew for coming out and replacing the flashing down the entire side of the town hall and fixing what was a failed previous repair. Uh, and now the roof is uh, shedding the water properly and the door is drying out and, and working as it's supposed to. The normal barbecue did open on February 22nd uh, for lunches and dinners. I know. <laughs> It is very bold to open a barbecue restaurant on Ash Wednesday. Yet they did it. And uh, I can tell you that I did sample the uh, smoked cauliflower and it was pretty good. I never had that before. Uh, you can find them online at normalbarbecue.com and uh, try that for yourself. And lastly, St. Patrick's Day will soon be upon us. Uh, it is a Friday this year. and if you're not doing anything, plan to stop in at the American Hotel, where you might enjoy a draft Guinness and over a hundred years of Irish hospitality from the Reynolds family. And that's all I've got, Chris. All right. Thanks, Mike. And Rick Mill, Mayor of Honey Eye Falls and Monroe County Legislator. How are we doing, Rick? We're doing good. It's uh, great to see everybody. And I'll probably dovetail into a couple of things that are my fellow uh, colleagues have already mentioned, but um, the Village Board of Trustees has conducted, uh, as of this airing, uh, their first budget workshop. Uh, these budget workshops are always open to the public. They are always held on Saturdays. Um, our first one was, is, as of this airing, Saturday, February 25th, and um, all subsequent meetings will follow on the Saturdays through March at 8 a.m. These are workshops only to review budget numbers um, and set a, set a plan in place so that the budget will be in good shape for the annual meeting and budget public hearing, which is currently scheduled for Monday, April 3rd. Um, we have had some very difficult walking conditions in the village uh, as a result of this past week's ice storm. Um, you know, again, as Mike said, really nothing uh, from a road standpoint that our DPW crew couldn't handle, but the ice came down uh, and, and froze so fast. Um, the sidewalk plows are really, it's, it's really tough to try to plow it off. So we know that that's gonna be an issue for a few days. Uh, people need to continue to be village, village, yeah, right, vigilant <laughs> as they walk the sidewalk areas throughout the village. The weather continues to be very cold. So this ice pack will probably be prevalent for a few days. Um, we were fairly lucky though, as, as um, Mike had said as well, um, we were, you know, no major road issues um, besides the slippery sidewalks and the frozen slush and ice along the curb areas. Some certainly some limbs and branches came down and will be continued pickup over the next few days, but nothing major occurred and only a couple of spotty uh, power outages. Our summer concert series, Good Vibes Flowing is just about 100% booked. Uh, these Tuesday evening concerts, June through August, have become very popular, and we appreciate our wonderful businesses that support these, and as well as the great attendance we've had. The Festival at the Falls is also being planned, which is uh, currently scheduled for Saturday, August 19th. This one-day festival includes craft sales, food, music, and some informational displays. This year, we also do expect to include some uh, potential for some wine or spirit tastings, um, as, and, and we just look forward to this wonderful event. Our thanks to Howard Hanna Realty in Honeyoy Falls for sponsoring and planning this event. Uh, from a county perspective, we continue to move through our ARPA funding process um, as those funds begin to go out, um, as well as many new referrals for project development and, and uh, those types of approvals, grant approvals for funding received, and just general department uh, uh, county business. Um, a continued focus is employee retention and recruitment, as well as boast, bolstering our uh, current workforce for some 800 jobs that remain open within the county. If you are looking for a career change or possibly even part-time employment, 
please consider joining the incredible Monroe County team. Uh, for information on postings, look to www.monroecounty.gov and click on the careers tab. And then lastly, I just saw something come through uh, my email and it was one of the uh, We Are New York State announcements that came through, um, but um, the administration has announced that they have uh, signed an agreement and, are, and is taking over the New York State Veterans Cemetery uh, in Seneca County. Um, this is going to be the very first uh, uh, New York State Veterans um, uh, Cemetery, which is uh, certainly a wonderful thing for our vets. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm really excited about this, but this is the old Samson Veterans Memorial Cemetery in Seneca County. And uh, they're gonna put some $2.8 million available uh, for uh, from the National Cemetery Association administration to do further upgrades and expansion. So I think it's really great. It's, it's about time uh, that we have a, a true national cemetery for our veterans here in this a, a state cemetery here in, the, in New York State. So very excited about that. That's all I have and I uh, appreciate the opportunity, Chris. All right, thanks, Rick. Steve, uh, put your camera back on so we can see you and uh, then go ahead and tell us about what's going on in Henrietta. Yeah, so I'll start with the storm. Uh, we got hit a little harder, um, but our crews have been out since 9 a.m. pre-salting. Uh, as the accumulation started to happen, they attached the plows. Um, some people ask why they don't have the plows on the whole time, because if there's nothing to scrape on the road, you can actually salt faster without the plows on the trucks. So, um, But then once the accumulation started happening, we had to start scraping the roads. Um, they basically kept going until good into the evening. We sent them home for rest uh, as they were starting to move into what's referred to as fatigue time. And then they came back out at around 3, 3.30 in the morning. Some of the crews ended at 9, some went till 9.30. So depending on when they ended, determined when they came back. And then we got everything cleared up. As I put it, we would have had uh, the sides all clear for the school buses at school actually been in session um but we did have a number of trees down in fact most of our road issues were due to trees so we had a couple um of our uh i guess they were the excavators with the uh, claws on them out helping lift trees off of roads um there were a couple places where whole trees came down so uh but it, that happened during the night um there were a couple accidents, usually because drivers were not being safe. Uh, we had one right in front of our DPW. Someone tried to make the light as he sped up to get through the light and then made the curve turn. He slid, hit the curb, caused the, so it was a rollover. But uh, fortunately, from as I understand, the, the, you know, the individuals are okay, but uh, car not so much. Um, then moving on to other business, uh, one of the big newsworthy items seemingly this week was that we did approve the special use permit for Shake Shack. They're going into the um, former Denny's uh, located on the intersection of Clay Road and uh, Jefferson Road. Um, so uh, very popular burgers, fries, shakes, that type of menu um, in New York City area and elsewhere. This is their first upstate, now what we call upstate, they might think, you know, New Rochelle is upstate, but uh, this is their first location in, in the majority of the, the state, I'll say. Um, so uh, we're excited that they chose Henrietta. Um, we were able to get all the mitigation, um, the hazardous material mitigation done in the construction or the demolition of the old library actually began today. So I had a schedule. Uh, they've been tearing it down fairly quickly. So uh, we, we put up a time lapse. So hopefully we'll be able to share that. Uh, they expect it to be done within the week. So. Um, that's exciting, making way for the, the new town court. Um, we had a couple other um, 
approvals uh, for various businesses. And one of the stranger ones we did, we approved a uh, loft for up to 50 homing pigeons. There's an individual in town who races homing pigeons. So I now know more about homing pigeons than I ever would have thought possible. It's amazing what you can learn being on a town board. So, um, but we did a lot of research and uh, there's an American Racing Pigeon Union. So we used their standards for what should be in a loft or coop and uh, went with that. So uh, that was one of our more uh, fun approvals. Um, but other than that, business as usual, which, you know, we've got, I think six ongoing apartment projects at various phases, either approved or in the application pipeline. Uh, we've got three large housing projects. Also, again, either approved or in the application uh, process and a uh, number of new businesses. So, uh, you know, that aspect isn't slowing down at all in Henrietta. Um, but uh, the, the nice thing that we're seeing is uh, we put in place some changes to our, in our 2019 comprehensive land uh, update. And that included some incentives to try to reuse existing buildings instead of paving over green fields. And we've started to see some return on that. Um, we've had a number of long, empty buildings being reused. And of course, the big one we see is at the mall. Um, not only did we have the URMC uh, Orthopedic Center come in and a affordable senior housing complex got built there because we switched it to being mixed use. Uh, we're starting to see stuff come back to the food court. And we've had uh, two new businesses come in, including one that knocked down Macy's and is building a whole new building in its place. Um, so, uh, you know, that, that's, that's exciting to see so that you don't see these things start to, you know, deteriorate. Um, as, as I'm sure my fellow supervisors all know, uh, no good deed goes unpunished though, of course, because like one of those that knocked down a very dangerous old hotel, empty hotel, uh, was a car dealership. So of course, instead of saying, great, you got rid of that eyesore, we hear, Oh, just what we need another car dealership. But, you know, that's the nature of social media. Um, and just as a last reminder, State of the Town is March 1st. Um, it will be at the um, RIT In and Conference Center uh, at noon. And we've got a couple major announcements that we're going to have at that one regarding parks and one regarding historic properties. So, uh, that'll be fun. And then finally, I'll close by saying that uh, the RIT Division One men's hockey team clinched the number one spot in the Atlantic Hockey League. So they will be playing in the uh, first round of the um, playoffs uh, first week in March. So um, excited for that. That's great. All right. Thanks, Steve. Anybody else have uh, anything that they want to add? Uh, Chris, I'll just say, I and actually Steve just reminded me of this when he was talking about the library. Uh, one of the things as a legislator we do is is we do have what we call office hours, and we try to go in all the different towns and communities that we, we serve. And actually last night, um, I did have office hours at the Henrietta Library, and uh, I wanted to give kudos to Steve and, and the town of Henrietta. What an incredible library that is. It, it's such a wonderful place. And I uh, had some really nice uh, engagement, engaging discussion there. But uh, just kudos to the town of Henrietta. It's a fantastic uh, facility. So well done, Steve. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you all for being here today. And thank you all for watching and listening and seeing what we had going on this week. Remember, if you like our Facebook page or subscribe to our YouTube channel every Sunday at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, this issue, this edition is broadcast, and you will be notified by those two platforms when it's broadcast. Otherwise, we'll see everybody else next week. Bye bye for now. Bye.
Imagine yourself communicating with a difference. Pandimensional Solutions helps you do this. Whether live spectator events, taped broadcasts, or real-time audience-engaging programs, you can benefit immediately from the tools Pandimensional Solutions will share with you. Do you want to make a difference? Contact us at pandimensional.com.